Hi, and thanks for joining. If you're new here, I'm Wendy, and this is Nina's Jewels. My husband and I buy things at garage sales, flea markets, thrift stores, just about anywhere we can find things to sell online and flip for a profit. If that's content you're interested in, you're in the right place. Today's video is going to be what sold for the week of December 3rd through 9th. Let's get started. The first thing we sold was a Wyndham Hill Waters Path New Age Music Video VHS. We picked this up at a thrift store. It was in used condition, but we tested it and it worked. It sold pretty quickly for $8.99, and we had paid just 13 cents for that. We do tend to pick up any kind of like New Age items because they sell very well for us. Next up was a pair of Rock and Republic women's jeans. We got these at the Goodwill bins. We paid $1.50 for these and they sold on best offer for $20 even. And we got positive feedback on those. Next up was a Nikon Coolpix camera case. It was just the case only. It actually had a camera in it when we picked it up, but it was not a Nikon camera. So we separated those and sold them separately. I think we still have the camera listed. It has not sold. But this camera case had like a belt loop on it so that you could put, put it on your belt and carry it um, on your belt loop. And then it had a magnetic closure. It was a very nice leather camera case. This we picked up at an estate sale. We paid just $1 for it and it sold almost immediately for $15 even on best offer. We got positive feedback on that item. Next up was a men's no boundaries charcoal skull screen print ringer tank top. We had gotten this in the storage auction unit that we had purchased where we had paid just 23 cents per um, listing that we had gotten out of that unit. We paid $30 in total for the storage auction. I'll link that video in the description box below so you can check it out if you want to. And this item sold for $11.98 on offer to buyer. Next up was a package of window clings. We sell a lot of window clings. They're a very popular item and we generally get them on retail arbitrage. This was National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation themed window clings. These sold for $11.18 on offer to buyer and we had paid $1.35 on clearance after Christmas last year. Next up was a Techniques Remote. Techniques Remotes sell very quickly generally and for great money. Sometimes we have sold one Techniques remote, I think for like $75. This one we got in a bag of remotes at the thrift store. We paid 34 cents for it. This is probably the reason why we picked up this particular bag of remotes. This one sold for our full asking price of $39.99. And like I said, we have paid just 34 cents for that. Next up was a little booklet called Getting the Most Out of Your U.S. History Course. I picked this up at an estate sale along with a bunch of Cliffs Notes, and I kind of picked it up on a whim. I was picking up the Cliffs Notes because I wondered if Cliffs Notes would sell, and this was in with all of the Cliffs Notes, so it was kind of like a study guide for a U.S. History Corps course. And I thought, well, I think these Cliffs Notes will sell, and the, none of the Cliffs Notes have sold yet, but this sold first. So this is just a perfect example of you know, you pick up a big bulk lot of something and the thing that you did not pick it up for sells immediately and everything you picked it up for has not yet sold. That generally happens to us. But this sold almost immediately for $7.48, which is not a lot of profit, but it was a really easy list and a really easy ship and also did not take up any space. So I would probably pick it up again if I saw it. Next up was a vintage 1980 Dakin large plush bald eagle toy. Uh, this one was like, it was like this big. It was pretty big. This we got at a garage sale for a dollar and it sold on offer to buyer for $16.98. Wow, somebody's really cool out there. Next up was a vintage book, hardcover book called Trees, the Yearbook of Agriculture. This book was from 1949. We got this at a garage sale. We paid just a dollar for it and it sold on best offer for $12. We had this in our store for about six or eight months. Next up was a women's plus size sexy beach wrap. It was a really interesting 
piece of clothing that you like kind of wrapped around your body a bunch of times that had spaghetti straps on it and um, it created like a wrap dress but it was kind of just one large piece of fabric that wrapped around multiple times with spaghetti straps but it was really cute and I had gotten this when I had purchased a mystery box of clothing from Facebook Marketplace and um, I've told the story of this in a few other videos, so bear with me if you've heard it before, but um, I had purchased that box out of curiosity, and when the seller sent it to me, they sent it with postage due. So I had to go to the post office to pick it up, and the postal worker took pity on me and did not make me pay the postage due because I was confused. I told him the story, and... They said, oh no, I'm not going to make you pay this. And then when I came back home, I reported it to Facebook Marketplace and they made the buyer give me a full refund. So I ended up getting everything out of that mystery box for free. Um, and things have been very slowly selling. There were a few good things in that box, but most of the stuff was kind of low quality. This was one of the cuter items in, in the box. And this did eventually sell for $16.48 on offer to buyer, but we had no cost on it, so that ended up working out. And we did get positive feedback on it, and um, I'm not surprised by that because it was a really cute cover-up. Next up was a package of Gloss Modern Hair Mask. It was brand new and sealed. I got this at a garage sale where there was a bunch of health and beauty items that were new in the package and sealed. It seemed like the seller had um, like subscription boxes and was selling off the items that she no longer wanted. So I had paid um, $3 a box. I gotten, gosh, I think maybe like five different items from her, maybe paid like $15 for, in total for everything. This is the first thing that sold. So I paid $3 for this and it sold for our full asking price of $17.99. Next up was a girl's sweater by the brand Poof. It was an eyelash style sweater and then it had um, a reindeer embroidery with like some sequins and other bling on it on the front of it. My husband got this at a garage sale and it sold for $12.68 on offer to buyer. Next up was a set of nine brown and gold painted floral chopsticks. Um, probably it originally had 10 but one of them was missing. We got these at an estate sale a very long time ago. They took forever to sell. We only paid 25 cents for them. I think this estate sale was, um, everything was like 75% off, 50% off or 75% off. I can't remember. Like I said, it was a very long time ago. But these did eventually sell for $13.99 and they didn't take up any space. So I guess worth the wait, but probably not an item I would pick up again because it was such a slow mover. Next up was a Bible. It was called the New Chain Reference Bible, the King James Version. This we got at an estate sale that we went to recently. Bibles tend to sell pretty quickly for us. It sold for $24 even on best offer. I don't know how much we paid for that because um, we were in a really big hurry when we were shopping at this estate sale and I usually write everything down as soon as we leave, but we were running out the door to another event after we left that estate sale and I didn't write it down and I have our totals and how much we paid for everything on video but I haven't viewed that video yet so I'll get to it. But we probably paid a dollar or fifty cents for that Bible. Next up was a six, a set of six Oneida Rogers silver plate flirtation large soup spoons. We got this in the Goodwill bins when we were playing bins bingo. We got a big bag of these um, Oneida flirtation flatware pieces and we divided them up into different lots and sold them that way. Some of them did have pretty bad flaws so we did disclose that. Uh, like on the forks a lot of the tines were bent and things like that. So we did have to lower the price compared to other listings and disclose the flaws. You'll see that my title does say flaws. These sold for $21.99, which I believe was our full asking price, and we had paid just $1.18 for that listing from our Goodwill Bins Bingo trip. Next up was a, another item that we got at that estate sale where we got the Bible. This was a Brickstone digital picture show, so it was one of those digital picture frames where you load your pictures on and then it shows them in like a video format. This was brand new in the box, never been opened. 
and I, like I said I don't know how much we paid for it we probably paid around five dollars for it the most we paid would have been ten dollars but I think it was probably closer to five this sold immediately for fifty two dollars and ninety nine cents which I believe was our full asking price next up was another item we got when we were playing Ben's Bingo this was a plush Peppa Pig Mr. Dinosaur and that sold almost immediately for $11.89 which was our full asking price I think but it, I think it included some kind of plush discount that we had running that particular month and like I said we had gotten that in the bins and we had paid just $1.18 if you have not checked out our bins bingo video I'll link it in the description box below and also make sure you go in and check out all the other bins bingo participants videos by typing in the words bins bingo into the search bar and that will pull up all of the other participants videos and you can see what everybody else found from their bingo card when they were shopping in the bins super fun collaboration that we participated in next up was another one of the health and beauty items that we got at that garage sale this was bottle of glow milk highlighter makeup this we paid three dollars for it sold for twelve dollars and sixty eight cents on best offer next up was a really cool find from our Ben's bingo trip this was a lot of pre-recorded and it was mostly 1970s music they were marked like Led Zeppelin Jethro Tull um, all kinds of cool 1970s bands they were reel-to-reel -reel tapes we just we had no way to test them so we just listed out what they were and we did it as an auction first it had a lot of watchers I was actually quite surprised that it did not get a bid I relisted it as an auction again thinking maybe it would get a bid it did not so the third time I listed it I did it as a buy it now and I listed it a little bit higher than we did our starting prices at the auction and we did get uh, an, an offer almost immediately on that for a hundred dollars which we accepted and we had paid just a dollar 18 for those at the Ben's Bingo trip and we got positive feedback on that so that was a really great find at Ben's Bingo that day next up was an item that I had gotten off of Facebook marketplace I had purchased a lot of items that was marked as mostly 18 inch doll accessories but it had other various and sundry doll items in the bag and this was one of the items this was a Zuru Mini Brands Heinz ketchup bottle and these Zuru Mini Brands items do sell well on eBay either individually or even better in a lot if you can find a lot of them but this was the only one of the Zuru Mini Brands items in this bag so I just listed it individually I had paid 67 cents for it out of that lot that I purchased and it sold pretty quickly for $9.99. Next up was a pair of girls guess jeans. These we got in the storage auction where we paid just 24 cents for them and they sold on offer to buyer for $13.58. We got positive feedback on those. Next up was a 2008 Kurt Adler spongebob square pants patrick christmas ornament we found this in the goodwill bins not during our bins bingo trip but during another trip where we paid 92 cents for it and it sold on best offer for 14 dollars we got positive feedback on that next up was another sheet of the christmas vacation window clings that we had gotten on retail arbitrage these we also paid a dollar 35 for and these sold for our full asking price of $14.99. Um, we do still have one of these listed. It is now after Christmas, so I don't believe we will sell any more of these this year, but we did also pick some more up after the Christmas items were marked down on clearance. So we will add those to our listing and hopefully continue to sell those for next year. Next up was a 2009 Starbucks coffee mug. This one said reinvent and it was by Toki marked Japan this one we found in the Goodwill bins and it sold for $20 even on best offer we had paid just 94 cents for that next up was a brand new sealed Arthur's lost book VHS that we found in a thrift store we paid just 49 cents for that and it sold on our full asking price of $24.99 any 
anytime we can find a sealed DVD for the for a low price we will generally pick it up because you never know which ones will sell for a high price and this was a perfect example of one. It didn't sell very quickly. I think we had it in our store for several months but somebody was looking for it and we had I think the only one listed and so they paid our full asking price for it when they found it. Next up was the Vampire Diaries on DVD The Complete Fifth Season. We had gotten this at a garage sale. We paid just 25 cents for it and it sold for our full asking price of $9.99. We got positive feedback on that. Next up was one of the free magazines that I sourced on Nextdoor. This one was Missouri Life, the June-July 2015 issue. This I had zero cost on because I got them all for free and it sold for our full asking price of $12.99. Next up was another one of the Lightkeeper Pros. If you've watched any of our previous videos, you know that we sold one of these last year. It sold almost immediately and this one sold very, very quickly as well. So this item is a bolo. Um, we picked this one up last year at a thrift store and I found this one at an estate sale. I paid a dollar for this one and it sold for $20 even on best offer. If I ever see these again in the future, I'll definitely be picking it up for the right price because it seems like they're going to always sell for around $20. So totally worth it. Next up is one of the Tannerite stickers. We found a huge stack of these in the Goodwill bins. Uh, I think this is only the second one we've sold, but we did not pay much for these. Maybe eventually, maybe this year when we do our inventory, we'll lot these together and do these a little bit differently because they are not moving very fast. But these are, you know, vinyl stickers that we found in the Goodwill bins. We paid 67 cents a piece for them, or at least that's how we, you know, divided it up that day. This one sold for $7.18 on Offer to Buyer. We got positive feedback on it. Next up was a pair of Mud Girls jeans that we got in the storage auction. We paid 24 cents for these and they sold for our full asking price of $15.99. Next up was one of the Harmonix Rock Band Fender Stratocaster guitars. This one was for a Wii. This one we got at a garage sale. We paid $2 for it and it sold on our full asking price for $26.99. Next up was a partially full bottle of Jupe Cologne. This we got in the storage auction. We paid 23 cents for it and it sold on offer to buyer for $12.78. We got positive feedback on that. Um, I will say that um, if you have not seen our most recent What Sold video, I will link it in the description box below. Do check that out because eBay has been cracking down on I'm not sure if it's actually a new policy or an old policy that they're cracking down on, but they are beginning to take down listings that are in the collectibles category of perfume bottles that have liquid left in them and only allowing sellers to sell empty bottles of perfume and cologne in that category. So we have actually removed any of our used cologne out of eBay completely and have moved it onto different platforms. Unfortunately, we haven't sold anything on other platforms, so I'm not very hopeful about that because used cologne and perfume was something that we actually made a lot of money on on eBay. But this is probably one of the last used colognes and perfumes you'll see on a wet sold video for me. There may be a few stragglers because my wet solds are a few weeks behind, but I have now removed all of my used cologne and perfume off of eBay and will no longer be selling it because I do not want to get a violation or a suspension. Okay, next up is a Microsoft Xbox game called Jump Force. This we got at a garage sale. We paid $1 for it. We tested it and it worked and it sold for our full asking price of $14.99. Next up was a 2011 Wendy's Kids Meal toy. It was brand new sealed in the package. It was a Pac-Man hide and seek toy. We found this in the Goodwill bins when we were playing Ben's Bingo. We paid $1.18 for it and it sold on offer to buyer for $10.38. We do pick up um, brand new sealed in the package kids meal toys. 
I know other buyers don't really pick them up, but we pick them up and sell them all the time. I mean, we may we might make two, three dollars on those sales, but for us, it's worth it. They are so easy to list, so easy to ship, and we sell them a lot. So it's something that we continue to pick up and will continue to pick up for sure. Next up was a Grolier Disney Christmas Magic Ornaments. It had two ornaments in it, a Mickey ornament and a Simba ornament. We got this at a garage sale. We paid just a dollar for it. They were brand new in the box. They sold on best offer for $20 even. We got positive feedback on those. Next up was a very unusual sale. I didn't expect it to sell at all, but it is a perfect example of why I list everything. This was an item that was in a box with something else that I had purchased at an estate sale. I think it was in a camera box. And I just found it in there and I thought, well, I'm just gonna list this, I already own it. And it was a three inch green rubber Austin City Employees Credit Union Squeeze Coin Purse. So um, I looked it up when I was when I found it and I saw that other of these little rubber coin purses were selling. I didn't see any of this particular one with this Austin City markings on there, but I just decided to list it. I said that we didn't pay anything for it because it was just a something that was thrown in a box with something else that we purchased and it sold immediately for $9.99. So this is a perfect example of why we always list everything that we find unless it's just, you know, actually garbage because you never know what somebody is looking for. I mean, I don't know why this sold. I don't know if it sold because somebody is collecting these rubber coin purses and they just didn't have this particular one that was marked this way, or if somebody was collecting items that were marked Austin City Employees Credit Union, you just don't know what about it made it sell. But it sold immediately and I'm so glad I listed it because that was just free money that we found. Next up was a modern record called Black Up by Shabazz Palaces. My husband found this at a thrift store. He paid $1.03 for it and it sold for $27.98 on offer to buyer. We got positive feedback on that. Next up was a pair of men's dress shoes. They were by the brand Aldo. We paid $4 for those at a garage sale. They sold on best offer for $45. Unfortunately, the buyer stated that they were too narrow for him and he did return those and we've since relisted them. Next up was a set of three resin high heel shoe Christmas ornaments. They were really cute. We got these at a garage sale. We paid 50 cents for those and they sold on, on offer to buyer for $25 even. Next up was a vintage Disney C.R. Gibson yellow Winnie the Pooh baby book. We found this, it was brand new, old stock in the Goodwill bins at our Ben's Bingo trip. We paid $1.18 for that and it sold almost immediately for $32 even on best offer. We got positive feedback on that. Next up was a 2009 Jazzwares Astro Boy the movie Peacekeeper action figure. It was new in the package. The package did have a little bit of wear on it, which we disclosed. We had gotten this at a garage sale. We paid $1.50 for it and it sold immediately for $34.99. So this is a bolo. I think it would be very rare to come across something like this new in the package, but it sold very, very, very fast and we got our full asking price for it. I think I probably could have asked for more and gotten more for it. If I ever see these again, even in or out of the package, I will definitely pick them up. Next up was a J. Crew Roll Neck Fair Isle Lamb's Wool Blend sweater that we got at the J. Crew sale. This sold for $40 even on best offer. We had paid $2 for this at the J. Crew garage sale, but unfortunately this was also returned to us because of a fit issue and we have that relisted as well. It already has another watcher, so hopefully that will sell soon. Next up was a vintage Sawa brand, which I think is a, a some kind of Norwegian brand, maybe Swiss or something like that. Um, this was a, a deluxe cookie press. It had all the parts and pieces to it. It actually looked like it had maybe never been used. Um, but so it was complete with the box, the manual, and all the parts and pieces. My husband found this at the thrift store. He paid $2.16 for it and it sold very, very quickly for $34.99, which was our full asking price. 
Um, cookie presses, we pick them up every time we see them because they sell for us every time. It depends on the brand, whether how long they sit in our store, but they will always sell. Every time we see a cookie press, we try to pick it up because they have like 100% sell through rate. Next up was a 35 inch left-handed golf putter. It didn't really have a specific brand, but it seemed like it was custom made. It had like a plastic um, shrink wrap on it. We found it at the thrift store and my husband only paid $2.16 for it. So I guess he was willing to take the risk on it because it seemed like it was a custom made putter and we just weren't, weren't sure about it. We know nothing about golf clubs, so we were really like trying to figure it out, but that was our best guess on it. We just listed it as best as we could. But it did sell for $34.99, which was our full asking price, and we made money on it, and the buyer seemed happy, so that ended up working out. Next up was a 2002 Marvel Toy Biz 6-inch Spider-Man 2 Art Articulated Superposable Action Figure. This was kind of a challenge to sell because we had, like some of these really articulated Spider-Man figures were going for really high. So we had decided to list it as an auction. And the first person that purchased it, we had two bidders on it. One of them seemed to be a legitimate bidder and one of them had zero feedback and just basically came in and trashed our auction and then never paid. Then the second we relisted it, the second time we only had one bidder on it, zero feedback bidder, and they, I actually reached out to them during the auction process and asked them to please verify where they where they lived, to try to you know weed out whether or not they were a real bidder. They actually responded to me, said that they lived in Brooklyn, so I had to continue letting them bid on the item. I couldn't cancel their bid at that point because they did communicate back with me. And then they messaged me at the end of the auction and said, I'm so sorry, I purchased another one. I'm not going to pay. I was like, you got to be kidding me. So then we listed it the third time at a higher price as a buy it now. And someone with zero feedback purchased it. I was like, you got to be kidding me. But they actually did pay. So, you know, you can't always count out those zero feedback buyers, but I, when, when I saw that it was a zero feedback buyer, I was like, what? <laughs> but they actually did pay and we've had no issue with it. So that was good news. But I was like thinking that this was going to be one of those cursed items. And for a while there it was, but we did finally get it out the door and we did, we have not currently had to date. We have not to date had any further issues with this item. It sold for $37.99 to the final buyer, and we had paid just 19 cents for that out of a thrift store toy bag. Next up was a Disney Frozen 2 Sledding Adventures replacement 9-inch Sven Reindeer figure. This we found in the Goodwill bins when we were playing Ben's Bingo. We paid $1.18 for it, and it sold very quickly for $22.38 on offer to buyer. Next up was a vintage 1984 Cabbage Patch Kids girl doll with brown hair and brown eyes. She did not have any clothes and she did have some staining on her. We got this at a thrift store. We paid $1.08 for it and she sold for $25 even on best offer. We did get positive feedback on her. Next up was a really good find and is now something that we know is a bolo. This is something my husband found in the thrift store at a at the very last second. He was actually standing in line and saw it laying there and just quickly comped it while he was standing in line. He paid $3.24 for it and it's called a Wentworth Wooden Jigsaw Puzzle. It was new in the package and these Wentworth Wooden Jigsaw Puzzles, they go for a lot of money. So if you ever come across one, definitely worth picking up whether it's new or used. The one that we had was brand new sealed. It sold for $84.98 immediately on offer to buyer, so definitely worth picking up. Next up was an official Pokemon handbook. We found this at the thrift store at the same time he got the puzzle. This we paid $0.51 cents for and it sold almost immediately for $9.99, which was our full asking price. Next up was an item that belonged to my daughter. She never took the tags off of it. She just displayed it in her room. This was a Bass Pro Shops Floppies Stuffed Pinto Horse. It sold for $24.99 on our full asking price. 
Next up was an item from the J. Crew garage sale. This was a tartan plaid festive button-up shirt. This sold for $26.38 on offer to buyer. We had paid just $2 for that at the garage sale. Next up was something my husband found in the thrift store. They were three brand new sealed polka music cassettes. And he just happened to find three polka music cassettes at the thrift store that day. They probably all belonged to the same person. They were all sealed, so he picked them up. He paid 72 cents in total for those, and they sold on our full asking price for $19.99. Next up was a Ralph Lauren olive green corduroy button-up shirt. We found this when we were playing Ben's Bingo at the Goodwill Ben's that day. We paid $1.18 for it, and it sold almost immediately for $19.58 on offer to buyer. Next up was a really cute set of ceramic elephants. They were the brand Rio Hondo, and they were little figurines, super cute. I got these at an estate sale. I paid $5 for them, and they sold on offer to buyer for $18.68. We did get positive feedback on those. Next up was something else we found in the Goodwill bins, but it was not during our Ben's Bingo trip. This was a package of shea butter soap by the brand Michelle Design Works. We had paid 92 cents for it at the bins, and it sold for $12.68 on offer to buyer. Next up was an item we got when we were playing Ben's Bingo, and this was an Avon women's cap sleeve nightgown. It was a vintage item. We paid $1.18 for it, and it sold very quickly for $19.98 on offer to buyer. Next up, I'll go over all of the collectible cards from my husband's personal collection. We sold one high-value card, which is a card valued at $10 or more. The card that we sold was a Magic the Gathering card from the Unlimited set. This one was called Fast Bond. And it sold for $92 even on best offer, and we did get positive feedback on that. Next, I'll go over all of the low value cards that we sold, meaning cards valued at $10 or under. This particular week, we sold seven cards in total for a total dollar amount of $16.73. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you hit the like button and consider subscribing. And stick around to check out another one of our videos that's going to be popping up right over here. Thank you so much for watching, and we will catch you on the flip side.